Are you from India? Do you speak Hindi or Bengali or another regional dialect? Here are some common issues that many speakers from India have when they try to speak an American English pronunciation. Pitch. I'm not so, sure what pitch is. This is a tool that we use in English to demonstrate emphasized words or reduced words if you're talking about lower pitches. Now, if you don't have enough pitches in your speech, what can happen is all of your words can start blending together. Take a look at this example here and tell me what you hear. You know, I've been taking a vacation. Let's listen to that again, this time with the text. You know, I've been taking a vacation. You know, one thing that's happening here is that we have three words in a row that all have roughly the same pitch. I haven't taken a, but if we start to add some pitches, it can help separate the words to make it easier to understand. I haven't taken a, again, I haven't taken a. Notice I'm going high and down, 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 down. This lowering of pitches tends to be the most difficult for English learners. They generally find it easier to raise their pitch. So that means it's a topic that is great for practicing. Let's say an E sound four times. Each time we're going to go down a little bit. I'll demonstrate. E, 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 E. Let's now do this again. I'll say a sound and I want you to repeat after me. We're gonna go down four times. E, E, E. E, 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 E. Okay, let's reverse that now and go up. We'll start low and then rise. E, 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 E. Let's do that again. I'll go slower so you can repeat after me. E, 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 E. Okay, now let's start high, go down, and then come back up. I'll pause slightly so you can repeat after me. E, 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 E. Can you do that faster now? E, 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 E. Great. Now we can do that same exercise with the word. We'll start high, then go down. I'll pause after each sound so you can repeat after me. Let's use the word leave. Leave, 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 leave. Can you do that faster now? Leave, 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 leave. Okay, we're going to make it more complicated now. We're going to do a phrase where we start high, go down, and then go high again with your pitch. Leave it on. Leave it on. Now we're going to do a lower pitch, then a higher pitch, then a lower pitch. Leave it on. Leave it on. Now we're going to do a low pitch, then a lower pitch, then our highest pitch. Leave it on. Leave it on. Now let's see how pitch is used with a concept called a compound noun. A compound noun is when two words joined together to make a single thing. Think of the word cell phone. A cell phone is a specific thing. When this happens, we put the highest pitch on cell. How would you say this? Basketball game. Basketball game. Notice that that first syllable is the stressed part of basketball. So that ba, that's going to be our highest pitch. Every other syllable is going to go down. So like basketball game, basketball game. Here are some similar examples to that where the first word will contain the highest pitch. Movie tickets, movie tickets, movie tickets, math exam, math exam. Math exam, math exam, English teacher, English teacher, English teacher, English teacher. For all of those examples, you'll know if it doesn't sound right if you do something like this, movie ticket, 
That's wrong. It should be movie ticket. Math exam. It, that's not right either. It should be math exam. Now let's describe normal nouns. In these situations, your stress or your highest pitch is going to fall in the second word. Older student. Older student. Older student. Older student. Wooden table. Wooden table. Wooden table. Wooden table. Vanilla cake. Vanilla cake. Vanilla cake. Vanilla cake. All right, now we're going to finish by practicing some sentences. For our examples here, let's put the highest pitch on the first word and every other syllable is going to go down. I have a birthday. I have a birthday. I have a birthday. I have a birthday. Maybe they'll make it. Maybe they'll make it. Maybe they'll make it. Maybe they'll make it. Whose did you say? Whose did you say? Whose did you say? Whose did you say? Now, let's put the highest pitch at the end. Everything else will be going down. Where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? Where did you go? I never really slept. I never really slept. I never really slept. I never really slept. You can tell me. You can tell me. You can tell me. A very good evening to everyone here. So one thing you'll notice there is that it's just said a little bit too quickly. Remember that English is a stress time language. I know we say it all the time, but this is really something that's important for rhythm. When a word is stressed, it's going to be held longer and the pitch is also going to be a little bit higher. So make sure that those two things are happening. For instance, in this original clip, what would have been helpful would have been holding the vowel sound in big and evening. So again, like big, good evening, big, good evening. Notice again, really holding that E and evening just a little bit longer. A very good evening to everyone here. Again, stressing a word, hold it a little bit longer. It's going to help your listener identify the words that you're stressing. It started somewhere when I was a very small child and it, it began with my mother, I think. Final L's, L's at the ends of words. Now, L sounds in English are a little bit difficult because they can have some different sounds depending on where they're placed. For instance, at the start of a word, you're typically going to raise the front of your tongue and make contact with the top of your mouth up here. And again, it'll sound like l, l. But at the end of a word, or sometimes even in the middle of a word, you're instead going to get like a dark L sound. So for that dark L, you're raising the back of your tongue, but lowering the front. And again, it sounds more like a uh. So for instance, compare a word, for instance, like ball, ball. It's not usually going to be ball, where you raise that front of your tongue. It's just going to be ball, where you raise the back of your tongue, drop the front of your tongue. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Oftentimes, when you're using a dark L2, you're going to close your mouth more. So again, the front of your tongue is down, and you're closing your mouth. For instance, in this word here, child, child. Again, compare that to the original. A very small child, and it... So instead of child, it's more child holding again the front of your tongue down. You can also see this here. State level, national level. Level, level. So instead of level, more level, lowering that front of your tongue. Uh, my mother's been a big influence on me. TH sounds are always tricky. Some things you want to keep in mind. I know a lot of students are taught that you should kind of put your tongue in between your teeth like a th. The, and that's fine, you can do it that way. But that can make transitioning to other sounds a little bit difficult. So my suggestion is to just very lightly press the tip of your tongue against the back of your top front tooth. And you can still get that th sound or th sound if it's voiceless. 
Just make sure that when you're making contact with your tongue and your tooth, that air is constantly flowing. If you press too hard, it's going to become like a T sound or a D sound, like mutter or mother, but it's mother, mother. You want to hold it and make sure air is constantly flowing. Mother. Uh, my mother's been a big influence on me. Another quick example too. I mean, her ability to think for another. Think, think. Again, tip of your tongue, making contact with your top front tooth. Our next point is somewhat related to our first point that we made. This time again, focusing on vowel sounds. I'll narrate an incident of my life which stayed with me all along, and that's, I used to play a lot of tennis when I was a kid. Here are examples of a couple of vowels that would have been a little bit clearer and more understandable if they were a little bit wider, a little bit more open. This A sound, for instance, what you want to do is you want to lower the back of your tongue to make sure enough air gets through your mouth. The front of your tongue will be slightly raised. And again, like A, A. For instance, stayed, stayed, or play, play. Make sure that the back of your tongue is down enough so that enough air can get through. Something that can be helpful if you have a hard time getting your, the back of your tongue down, you can try opening your mouth a little bit wider. A, A. I'll narrate an incident of my life which stayed with me all along, and that's, I used to play a lot of tennis when I was a kid. Our last point is again related to stress, but this time for individual words. There are lots of words that, in a lot of Indian languages, the stress is going to be placed on a different part. But in American English, you're going to hear the stress placed in a different section of the word. For instance, here. Uh, my mother's been a big influence on me. Influence. Influence. So for instance, when influence is being used as a noun, you're going to be stressing that first syllable, not the second. It's not influence. It's influence. He's a big influence on me or she's a big influence on me. Stressing that first syllable. Hey guys, looking for corrections for your pronunciation mistakes every day? Check out our Telegram group. Visit patreon.com slash Uh My mother's been a big influence on me. It may sound minor, but there are lots of other words and situations where having the stress on the wrong syllable can make it really difficult to understand. Here are some more words that are typically mispronounced or misstressed. Although, information, discuss, development, register, communication, understand, technique, whenever, already, colleague, Instead, stress. you want to watch out how you're pronouncing these words, making sure that you put the stress on the right syllable. Let's take a look at our first group. Although, although, Europe, Europe, understand, understand, agree, agree. You also want to watch out for TH sounds. Here are some examples with both the voiceless th and the voiced th. Wit, with, wit, with, bat, bath, bat, bath, tin, thin, tin, thin, tank, thank, tank, thank. Bat, bathe, bat, bathe, coat, loathe, coat, loathe, ten, then, ten, then. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Intonation patterns. You want to make sure that you're not overusing rising intonation or wavering intonation. Rising intonation is when you do this type of movement with your tone. Rise, rise. You want to try to use more falling intonation. Fall, fall in a lot of sentences in English. Some quick examples. How did you get here? How did you get here? Notice here has that here. It's not here, it's here. How did you get here? His name is not Mark. Again, Mark. Mark falling. It's not Mark. It's Mark. His name is not Mark. My friend drove the car. Car falling. 
My friend drove the car. You also want to pay attention to your sentence stress. What tends to happen for a lot of speakers from India is they place the stress on too many words. English is stress timed. It's not syllable timed. That means that if a word is stressed, it's going to be held longer and receive more emphasis than a word that's not stressed. You want to stress content words. We've talked about this before, but a quick summary. Content words are words like adjectives, nouns, and verbs. They express the most information in English. Let's do some quick examples. I lost my bag at the airport. I lost my bag at the airport. The stress is on bag and airport. I lost my bag at the airport. If you take a left at the intersection, you'll see the gas station. If you take a left at the intersection, you'll see the gas station. Stressing gas, left, intersection. Lastly, for sentences, you want to make sure that you're not speaking too quickly. When you combine a lot of these issues with speaking quickly, then it can become very difficult for other people to understand you. So here is a quick example exercise you can do to see what it means to slow down. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Try not to say it too fast. Try to make sure that every word is pronounced clearly and understandably. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. You can also take a look at sentences that have some stress and some emotion involved. Man, I can't believe they lost the game. Man, make sure you hold that. Man, I can't believe. Notice you're holding believe. I can't believe they lost the game. Holding game. They lost the game. Man, I can't believe they lost the game. Efficient. Efficient. Instead. Instead. Communication. Communication. Beginning. Beginning. Request. Request. Already. Already. Communication. Communication. Engineer. Engineer. So I am already doing a very well. That was Indian actor Dilip Joshi speaking English. And if his goal was to improve American English pronunciation, and I'm not saying that it is, I would suggest one tip that I think would give him immediate improvement in pronunciation. And it's this, give your vowels time to breathe. And if you're an English learner, whether you're from India or not, this is going to be something that has an immediate impact on how you say words and sentences in American English. Now to get the most impact from this, I want you to follow along with me on these exercises. In fact, it would be even better if you record yourself as we do it, because these are the same types of exercises that I use in my classes with students. Firstly, let's take a look at this phrase. I'm already doing a very, very challenging thing. I am already doing a very, very challenging thing. How about we break this into smaller pieces, starting from the end? No, actually, even smaller than that. How about just the vowel sound, the primary vowel? Eh, eh, the short I sound. Hold that sound for a second. Now let's add the TH sound. Theh, theh. Now we can add the whole word together. Thang, thang. Are you able to hear a difference between mine and his, especially with regards to the vowel? Thing. Thang. Let's build on this. Challenging is a word that has three syllables. So let's remove everything but the vowel sounds. Al, eh, eh. Now we can add the rest of the letters. Al, eh, eh, challenging. Let's compare again. Challenging. Challenging. What I'm hearing with these vowel sounds is a word that's just much clearer and easier for your listener to understand because the vowel sounds have so much more time and so much more space. They also have a lot more breath. You can do this on your own. These are the steps I would encourage you to follow anytime you have a word that you find difficult to pronounce. Firstly, you want to remove all of the consonants. Then you want to just say the vowel sounds of the word. Lastly, you can then add all the consonants back. 
What this does is it helps to reinforce the vowel sounds when you're talking. So that way, when you add the whole word back together, the vowel sounds will get a little bit more emphasis. Let's practice this with another word that a lot of my students and people I've talked to in videos have a hard time with. Regularly. 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 So again, let's just do the vowels. E, U, R, E. Now we can add the consonants back. Regularly. This really works because the vowels are so much more important in English. It's what your listeners are listening for. Often what I see students doing is that they're letting consonants kind of take over the word, which leads to speech that doesn't quite sound very natural. Let's practice some more. I'm going to show you a sentence, play some audio of Dilip Joshi saying it, and then saying the sentence myself. Also, if you're learning, comment with a word that has been difficult for you to say, but that this strategy is really helpful for. She joins us very soon. She joins us very soon. She joins us very soon. Let's just do the vowel sounds for this. E -oya, e -oya, she joins us e very soon. It could be writing. It could be writing. I -e, writing. writing. Could be. Could be. I -e, could be. Could be. It could be writing. It could be writing. Now, as you're practicing with sentences, you'll also want to start paying attention to stress and intonation. These have a huge impact on sound as well. It could be writing. Could be writing. So notice that writing is the stressed word here. So again, like, be writing, be writing. So notice that writing is a higher pitch than B. But is writing having rising intonation or falling intonation? So like writing or writing. Let's listen to it again. It could be writing. I'm hearing rising intonation. Writing. Good up and I've been good, I've been fortunate. Oh. This is how Ileana the Cruz is able to sound more native-like when she speaks in American English. That's because American English really relies on something called reductions. Re what? Reductions are times when words are not stressed. They're like the actors in a play or a movie who... Well, they get forgotten. You, you need them, but they're not as important as the stars, the stressed words. Reductions are said faster. They're pronounced weaker and oftentimes have vowel sounds or consonant sounds that completely disappear. This can happen in single words that appear on their own. For instance, how about this word? Reply. Reply. The stress is on the word ply. So what happens to the first part? Well, you can say reply, and some people do reply with that re sound. But when you listen to native speakers, they're more likely to pronounce it as r, r. It gets reduced, so it becomes reply. Compare again, reply versus reply. This happens in sentences too. How about that first example that we looked at way back in the beginning of the video? Good up and Good I've been. Good I've been. Good I've been. What a lot of my students are doing though is the opposite of this. They're pronouncing every single word extremely clearly. Good. I've been. That's how that would sound if you pronounce every single word very clearly, which can work great if, for instance, you're giving, say, a speech, but it doesn't sound quite as natural often for those times when maybe you're talking with friends or people on the street. Now, there are some common reductions you may already be familiar with. For instance, how do you normally say this? Let me eat? Actually, it's normally going to sound like lemme with a stress on eat. It's like let me eat. Let me eat. Or how about this one? I don't want to go? No. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Reductions are a big reason why you can listen to something in English, like a movie or a TV show, and not really understand what was said, even though you can read the sentence and understand everything. Don't believe me. Well, first, like the video if you're learning something new, and then take a look at these examples. I'll show you three reduced sentences, give you a second to guess what was said, and then show you the answer. Number one. Had a, had a, I had a feeling. Number two. What is my, what is my, what is my day like? Number three. 
to get her to, to get her to, trying to get her to not feed me how'd you do let me know in the comments which ones you thought were easy or which ones you thought were hard now it's your turn i'm going to show you a group of words see if you can say them in a reduced way i decided i decided i decided to leave i mean it's I mean, it's, I mean, it's great being here. Are these things that you're using in your own speech? We actually have a poll going on right now. Let me know which reductions are most common for you. Now, one last thing that's helpful for getting your reductions to sound more natural involves linking. We have other videos that talk about linking in more detail, but here are just some basic principles for you that you want to make sure you're following. Firstly, for a word that ends on a consonant and when the next word starts with a vowel, you want to attach that consonant onto the vowel sound. With that. That. How about this situation here? Red and then apple. But this is actually going to sound like red dapple. Red dapple. How about this? Notice we have the words that and I, but it's actually going to sound more like that I. Another situation is when a word ends with a consonant and the next word starts with the same consonant. What you want to do is you want to just say one consonant, but maybe hold it a little bit longer. To give you a quick example, how about these? Black and cat. Black has that k sound. Cat starts with the same sound. So we can just link those together like black cat. It's a little bit easier to say, right, than saying black cat. Here's another example. I managed to get, I managed to get. Manage to. Because the T and the D sound are so similar in terms of mouth position and even sound, we can really join those together a little bit faster. So instead of saying managed to, it'll be more likely to hear manage to. One last linking sound that may also be the most challenging involves held sounds. Held sounds are, for instance, when you take like a T or a D or a B or a P, a few other sounds, and you don't release the breath. So for instance, a word like cut, instead of saying cut, you can hold the T and just say cut. This is going to occur when one word ends on a consonant and the next word starts with a consonant, though a different one. Here's a quick example. Pop star. Pop star. So instead of saying pop, star no this is just going to become pop star i'm not releasing the breath on the last p until i get to the s on star here's another example how would you say this i mean it's great being here great being 